Onigashimasu. Welcome back to the Gojuri Karate Center. Today we are working on a template for training. What kind of templates would you use to do training in your personal capacity? Something we did when I, not me, but uh, the dojo I'm in, um, was involved with the Sewakais grouping and something that was pretty important I think in the time of Tazaki Sensei and that is four directional training. This is a fantastic exercise especially for building the basics, the kihon and the fighting spirit. I don't do it exactly the same way as the Sewakai um, would have done it. I do it with my own interpretations or variations based on slightly different ideas. So, you know, the, the, the generic kernel of knowledge that we're working off of comes from Sewakai, but this is, if you're a Sewakai practitioner, you're probably going to go, oh no, it's totally wrong. And that's okay. Um, it's not about whether it's right or wrong, it's about what um, benefit I can glean for myself and for my students. So, four directions, basic principle being I will use one stance four times. So I turn to my left, I turn to my right, I turn to the front and I turn to the back. Now I change my stance. So I turn to my left, turn to my right, turn to what is the current front and turn to the back. Change stance to my left, to my right, to the front, to the back. Change stance to my left, to my right, to the front, to the back, and that is the template. So four different stances. So now I'm forcing myself to use all four stances. And if I wanted to, I could even consider the fact that I might be using, at a basic level, Ben Sukodachi as well, so a hidden fifth stance. And so typically their idea would be maybe that you do uh, block, 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 chest block, chest block, chest block, chest block, stomach block, stomach block, stomach block, stomach block. Uh, they like to do something along the double handed. So maybe double hand, double hand, double hand, double hand, and then finish. And that's more in line with, I think, the original uh, four directions. Personally, I prefer doing a repeat uh, of all three blocks in the cat stance. That's my personal uh, twist on it that I like. And not to do too much of this, it's such a small part of our karate, so I try and avoid it. Um, this is neglected in Goju. We don't see it very often. When we do, yeah, maybe there. You can work on different facets of the karate that is maybe neglected in the kata. Then they build it. So that first set would be a set of 16. Then there would be Jordan, 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 Chudan, 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 Gedan, 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 Jordan, Chudan, Gedan, Jordan, Chudan, Gedan, Jordan, Chudan, Gedan, Jordan, Chudan, Gedan. Hold on, I ended up the wrong way. Oops. So, where did we get to? Mm, let's redo that. I'm racing through it. So, Jordan. 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 New direction. One, two, three, four. I'm starting to let little uh, bad habits in my template creep in. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. And then you finish. 
Okay, so general idea. Then they add kicks and they do block punch, block kick, block punch kick. And this becomes a, a template for Keon. So let's say I wanted to work on Geek Set Itch in a different way and I wanted to get a couple of repetitions in. I could be doing the following. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Change of direction. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now I have the difficulty of how do I turn. Remember I stepped across, so just step across. One, one, two, three, four. Step across. One, two, three, four. Step across. One, two, three, four. All right, now move into the next piece. We were using Shikwadach there, so I might do one, two, and one, two. Low block, high attack. Low block, high attack. All right, moving to the next part. Maybe steal from Gojikai. Kamai, a Kamai, simple. Kamai, or if I was doing gigs at knee, it would be more shuke. Kamai, and now the double punch for the end of the kata. Or maybe Kamai, one, two. Kamai, one, two. A Kamai, one, two. Kamai, one, two. And now I've done kicks at itch in a different way. Most important thing is finding something that makes your training exciting. This also allows you to train in a much smaller area. You can take this exercise and superimpose your bunkai. I typically teach. That's my first bunkai. Second bunkai. Oh, third bunkai. Fourth bunkai. Fifth bunkai. And sixth bunkai. And then the, these basic ideas for Geeks at Itch are what we practice. Now, I could be working on the idea of four directions and training in a small space. And maybe the idea is one, two. Now I have to deal with situation behind me. So one, two. One, two. One, two. And now I've created a different kind of stepping. All right, now I want to go to that side and I want to do the next bunkai. So one, two. Next attack from this side. So maybe one, two, three, four, and I need to be this way. Next bunkai, move to the inside. One, two, finish there. Turn around. So you can see a commonality in the stepping. And again, the whole idea being that at some point I am dealing with a basic idea of the kata. Now, two bunkai left, only two directions. I'm going to end up facing the wrong way. So I might recapture or I might just redo those a few times. The principle is finding something that really excites you and helps you train. Sometimes you don't have a, a brine to train with and you have those sad, gloomy days like today, overcast, dreary here in South Africa. 
no brine to, to, to practice beating up and now you've got to find something else to entertain yourself. You can't just sit in the dojo and think to yourself, what am I to do? The most important thing is to find the ability to train. Brings me to my end point before we close off for today. What do you go to a dojo for? A lot of people believe that they go to a dojo to learn karate. That the sensei will be there and they will spoon feed them. Some of the parents believe they will pay and they will get something back in return. The payment is so that sensei can lead a reasonable life and not go too hungry. Um, there's this whole idea that teachers of various sorts need to be vocationally orientated and get paid peanuts and um, they must do it because they're passionate. Um, you know, this is... I was a school teacher, I hated this idea. Um, I'm educated. I need to be paid a decent salary. It's the reason I left teaching in the formal sense and became a tradesman because what I could earn in a month in the classroom, I literally earned in a week as a tradesman, getting my hands dirty, working. And so my season is, let's call it four months at best, where I am really making a decent income from cleaning chimneys. Four months, eight months, I can be in the dojo, so for one third of the year, I can make the same salary I was earning as a school teacher, which required me 12 months of the year, plus all the extra time, the overtime, the extracurricular activities. Don't get me wrong, teaching is a vocation and it's highly specialized, but you know, in countries where they don't pay teachers well, they wanna know why there's a massive loss of teachers, it's because you're paying peanuts. You know, and the politicians who think this is cool, well, just have a look at what they live in and how they live and what they drive, all right? And start asking yourself a few questions about whether or not that's a good idea or a bad idea, okay? I don't like politicians. Needless to say, let's get back to the topic. You need to find something that keeps you absolutely energized in your karate. Um, so you come to the dojo, you don't come to get a belt, you don't come to pay money and to have somebody spoon feed you. And the idea is that you come to the dojo, you come to receive corrections. Everybody gets corrections. Everybody has mistakes. You go home and you fix those mistakes in your own time, in your own training, because you can only get to the dojo maybe twice a week, there's an allocated class, so the other time is up to you to find time to train. Secondly, you come to the dojo to train with your buddy, your partner, and to get that two-person work going. If you don't have that opportunity at home and your friend and yourself can't come together, then the dojo is that common meeting ground. And thirdly, you come to a dojo to make use of a lot of equipment. All right, we're fortunate, we're lucky, we're blessed in that sense that we have the equipment. And we use a lot of teaching aids to train. By the way, in Okinawa, they like teaching aids as well. All right, it's not just up and down. Um, every major school out of Okinawa does hojio or undo. So I rest my case. So, we've got our, our ability to come to the dojo, to train with our partner, train with the equipment and get corrections from sensei. So, what is left for me to do is I need to go home. I need to be passionate about my training. There are a few things that are sacrosanct. My kata is sacrosanct. And so, I keep that as is. Maybe the bunkai for the grading is sacrosanct, but I must explore. Karate without exploration is also very mundane. And this is where these kind of templates come in and they help you develop an idea. So that is it. I hope you enjoyed your training with me this morning or got some ideas from the training. Some of these ideas are good for your dojo, if you're an instructor, some of these ideas are for your own personal training and hopefully you get something valuable realizing that you can break some of the rules. And if you have a class or a group of five people and then you can do the same exercise but instead of just having one person attack from here, you can then start working on five different directions. Not to say that the kata is five different people fighting you, but rather to work on reaction time, on the change of direction. After all, in a life and death situation or a survival situation, 
you're usually not confronted face to face. The attacker comes from somewhere else first because they need that element of surprise. All right, that's it. I hope you have an awesome one. Arigato gozaimasu. Sayonara. Don't forget to like, subscribe, leave a comment, and uh, we'll hopefully get back to it and bring in some ideas with uh, your comments in mind. Cheers.